welcome to episode 198 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 17th of February. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some sewing, which is patchwork. I have a gadget, a blast from the past, a few questions from the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group and some information on my shop at the end of the podcast. So we have a couple of make-alongs going on in the Ravelry group and on Instagram and that's the Retro Mal and also Craft 20 a Day. And in the description bar there's some information on those or I've explained in previous podcasts as well. So let's get on with the knitting shall we? I have a couple of finished objects and first of all I have some mittens finished. I absolutely love these. The colours just really make my heart sing. These are the Wishmaker mitts by Erica Hooser and I used some Blacker Yarns and Jameson Smith that I had in my stash and look at that gorgeous gorgeous pattern I am so pleased with these. So the original pattern had three colours this band at the bottom here was an additional colour and so was the top here to sort of frame it. I just wanted to have two colours because I thought it looked quite nice and simple and the front has got this beautiful dandelion clocks with a border around the edge and the top there's some one by one twisted rib to edge the bottom the thumb and the top of the hand as well and the back has got these gorgeous diamond shapes um, the same pattern at the bottom and the top um, and there's like a little frame around the outside there as well. Uh, a couple of people have been asking me actually what sort of pattern would I suggest a person that's new to colour work and actually I think these would be quite good um, to start with. Obviously you've got the challenge of reading a chart but with any colour work it's going to be like that. As long as you've stick to the principles of working from right to left from bottom to top on the chart and then realising that any sort of greyed out spaces are just to be ignored in a chart because that's because it'll be grey at the bottom where if there's increases further up the chart if you see what I mean and the other thing is is to keep your tension relatively even between your two colours as well now I use my both of my hands to do my colour work um, but you could of course just pick one yarn up nip with it and then drop it and pick the other one up it takes a bit of getting used to of course but it is a lot of fun and I just love the effect that this colour work comes out with and actually if you're because you're just using two colours and just alternating according to the chart you can create something really pretty so there is a side to them obviously you've got the left hand and right hand but you've got to make sure that you make one of each because there's two separate charts for those and I think they're just lovely if you do four ply mitts you've obviously got double the thickness of of yarn as well so that makes them nice and warm i must admit i was very very close yarn chicken <laughs> with the white <laughs> i thought i'd need to order some more actually we made it so that was really good i love it when you win at yarn chicken <laughs> <laughs> I have got plenty of the minty green left so if I need to use it for any more colour work um, I can pick it up as well. I think I might have about 20 grams left of that one. The mitten blockers that I'm using are from Woodaco and you can order them according to which size you want. I think I chose the medium size for mine. It does come with some thumbs but just to show you um, what the mittens look like I can just hold them up on camera. Um, they have been blocked with the thumb pieces in before um, I just find them really useful to have something to stretch the material out especially with colour work just to neaten it up um, to have a nice finished mitten so right that's the first finished object I've got to show you and I have a second finished object I must admit Adam's mum knitted this so I am cheating a bit <laughs> so it's a jumper so this is an antler jumper and the pattern's by Tin Can Knits and isn't it gorgeous? So I have a 
cardigan in this pattern obviously there's buttons down the front because it is a cardigan and adam's mum liz has also knitted a cardigan for jensen as well so i thought what would be better than to have a matching set of sort of jumpers and cardigans with the same pattern on i didn't think adam would really like the cardigan so i saw that they've got the antler jumper as well as the antler cardigan so i purchased the jumper it is a separate pattern compared to the cardigan but i did think that it was well worth it because i know that we've already knitted two versions of the cardigan one for me and one for jensen so i'm sure i'll knit that again and I'm sure Adam will have multiples of these actually because it's an Aran weight jumper and he loves a nice thick cosy jumper because he always gets cold and it's got this beautiful cable all across the top isn't that lovely and it goes all the way around the yoke like that and I've knitted it well Liz knitted it <laughs> in the same yarn that me and Jensen's cardigans are in so we'll all be matching unfortunately we have to wait till Jensen's a bit bigger because his is knitted in a size for a one-year-old because um, I worked out because he was born in November he'll probably need a cozy warm knit for next November as well so for a one-year-old um, I should have knitted a small one as well <laughs> but we will all be matching so so this is all finished ready for then for us all to match and it's knitted in um, a merino Aran base but it has these neps in it Donegal nep I did buy a couple of bags of this yarn from my yarn supplier and I was going to stock it in the shop but it does annoy me a little bit the neps are a little bit loose in this weight of yarn so I decided not to stock this yarn but as I'd already got it and we'd already got them knitted in for me and Jensen I thought well I've got to knit it in the same yarn and I did dye it in the colourway living on a prayer um I sell in my shop normally anyway but obviously this is a slightly different base because of the little neps we did knit the arms, well, Liz knitted. <laughs> Liz knitted the arms slightly longer than the pattern suggests because we measured Adam's arm. Um, he must have really long arms. So I think they were a couple of inches longer than the pattern suggests. So um, that's what we did. And I think it was the extra small or a small size that we used to fit Adam because he's, he's a slim chap. And we did it slightly longer in the body as well. Um, so it is quite a long jumper it's a little bit longer than the pattern suggests and look another game of yarn chicken <laughs> I just love the fact that there's very little waste actually so I dyed up 700 gram skeins of this yarn for this jumper and we ended up with very little left but of course with knitting a little bit longer on the arms and the body um, you would knit you would use more than yarn than the pattern suggests if you catch my drift so there we go i am going to get adam to do a twirl in his new jumper that adam's mum's knit him and see if he does see if he does a good job if not he'll have to be fired <laughs> i haven't got barbara to wear it obviously because she's set to my measurements and adam's a little bit slimmer than me so barbara would find it a little bit of a tight squeeze i think <laughs> So hopefully I'll insert some footage of Adam doing his twirls here. So Adam, it's your turn to do some twirls. Yes. So what do you think of your new jumper? It's lovely, it's lovely and warm. You have to say thank you to your mum. Yes, I will. Thank you, mum. <laughs> Another twirl for luck. This way, this time. Ta-da! You're supposed to say. Ta-da! So we are now onto my works in progress and I've picked up my wishes card again again. And I've done quite a bit of work on this. I'm quite pleased with the progress that I've made. So this is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli and I'll pop a picture up here to show you what the finished garment looked like. Um, although the finished garment in the in the images of the pattern are actually in a black yarn so it's harder to see what the features of the cardigan are but it's basically longer at the back and it comes up shorter at the front sort of like a waterfall shape and that's how i've got on so far doesn't actually look that much but if i show you my stitch marker <laughs> i've knitted from the stitch marker and it's like a little cookie <laughs> I've knitted that much now that doesn't look that much but there are at least 450 stitches on the needles because it's increasing 
there's some increased rows across the back you can just about see a line there where the first row of increases is and then the second row of increases is very close to the last time I showed you where the cookie is which I can't find now <laughs> so there's another line of increases across there so there's two rows of increases so far and there's another row of increases further down I think I'm about two inches away from that point and then I've got a few more inches to finish then <laughs> so I've still got a bit of a way to go I've got the sleeves on some cables there um, and I'm going to go back to those obviously when I've finished the bottom of the cardigan but you can see I'm going backwards and forwards on the bottom of the cardigan there and hopefully in a few weeks I'll have actually finished the body of the cardigan and I'm hoping because the sleeves aren't sort of oversized at all they'll be a lot quicker to knit and I'm thinking I'm going to do three quarter length sleeves anyway the yarn that I'm using is my own hand dyed yarn and this is the gold colourway after a spando ballet song <laughs> and this is a really beautiful combination of yak merino and silk which I'm really pleased about so I bought the yarn from my yarn supplier to sort of try out I knitted a swatch and I really liked how it came out when it's blocked it comes out really lovely and neat and I dyed this especially to knit this cardigan when I thought it would be really it'd go really well with sort of a light turquoise so if you look in the background I think that those sort of colours go really well together and the navy as well I think um, so I'm getting on slowly but surely with my wishes cardigan by Hoki Locatelli and now I'm on to my sewing section so I've actually picked up some patchwork um, that I started quite a while ago <laughs> before lockdown so that shows how long I've had it <laughs> and I'm working on some foundation pieces and I've literally just done half a block <laughs> so the last time I showed you this was possibly two years ago and I'd already done this segment here and this little bit at the top and since the last time I've showed you I've done these two blocks at the bottom but if you look really carefully there's some very very tiny little pieces in there with the foundation piece and technique i've got it pinned here just because it was coming away from the paper a little bit at the back so i thought i'll just pin it to keep it secure and this is the yellow brick road pattern by helen butcher who is little patch pockets and i'll leave a link to her website in the description bar down below and this actually was a class she did um a couple of years ago um for this quilt the yellow brick road quilt and isn't that gorgeous so i really wanted to have a go at this so we organized my local quilt group to have helen um to lead this class a couple of years ago and i have done a terrible job of not finishing it so i thought i'll pick it up again and actually once i've got these two little sections done and joined them all together i thought well why did i stop it's so much fun although when i did first pick it up again i was thinking oh no these little tiny pieces are a nightmare but once you get the hang of it it's really not that bad at all so foundation piecing is where you have the paper and it's on the back of the work and then you stitch with the paper facing upwards um, and then you're adding pieces of fabric to the back to make these really complicated shapes shapes that you find it really difficult to join together without using foundation paper piecing really so i'm really looking forward to getting a finished well four blocks so this is half of one block um and then it's it's supposed to be in like a circular shape but i may change it up a little bit i don't know i might do sort of a fan one side and then another fan the other i'm not sure but i did intend for it to be a table runner for our lounge and these are the sort of colors that we've got in our lounge grays blues and greens i think that'll work really nice so I've got a little bit of a long way to go. It did take me a few hours to make these two blocks. Although I was getting into the technique again because I hadn't done it for a little while. But now I've done those two, I feel that I'm sort of away now and ready for more, thirsty for more. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get maybe a full block done by next week. We shall see. I'm really feeling like I want to do lots of quilting. I'm getting the quilting fever again. <laughs> So that is my sewing that I've got to show you. 
I do have a gadget for this week. So last week I mentioned various conditions to follow if you're just sewing jersey fabrics and I talked about using a specific needle um, in your sewing machine so that it works well with a jersey fabric like a ballpoint needle or a stretch needle because the end of the needle is sort of blunt so it doesn't damage the fibres as it's going through and the stitches form properly. And now another thing that somebody had commented on on last week's Ask Me Anything was that actually having a new needle in your machine every sort of couple of projects or, or I tend to do it every sort of day of sewing really I'm a bit naughty <laughs> but having a new needle at regular intervals is really important and one thing that I do is that I collect used needles in a little tub so this is a tub that I got for some beads, I think. I think they were Gutemann beads. Yes, Gutemann seed beads. Yeah, it's from a packet of Gutemann seed beads. And this is ideal to keep your used needles in. Or you could, to be honest, you could use any sort of plastic tub. And I find it useful just to have by, have by your machine. So you can pop it in there. It's safe. You're not going to drop it on the floor and then tread on it. And you can then dispose of them safely in the bin. And then you know that it's not going to poke through the bag or damage anything or, or if you're collecting the bin bag up for instance you're not going to you're not going to stab yourself with a loose needle so having a little tub to keep your damaged pins and needles in or used needles like the machine is absolutely ideal so that's my gadget for this week it's a very cheap inexpensive gadget which is always good <laughs> The next thing I have to show you is a blast from the past. And talking about the antler jumper that I showed you earlier for Adam, this is the cardigan that Adam's mum knitted for Jensen. So it's got that same antler pattern around the neckline, but this has got buttons on. And I think buttons are ideal for a little baby because it's easier to dress them, isn't it? And this is a quite thick cardigan, obviously, because it's in the same Aran weight yarn. And I just think that's a really lovely pattern. I think and I perhaps should have knitted one for a smaller size as well but this is ready for when he's about a year old I thought that that would be ideal for next sort of winter time when because he was born last November for this November it'll be nice and cozy as well isn't that sweet so I just added some buttons that I had in my stash and and it's just got that really cute little antler pattern I have knitted the antler toque before which is a hat pattern which is a really nice pattern as well but I gifted it to somebody so I can't show it to you um, so there's a whole host of patterns with the antler type of um, cable on it so I'm going to be really excited for us all to be matching um, when next year comes so that is the that's the antler cardigan by Tin Can Knits and it's the same yarn as I knitted Adam's jumper in there we go isn't that cute <laughs> Next I have the ask me anything section of the podcast so these three questions I've got from my Ravelry group which is called ask me anything Ravelry group but you can drop me an email on crafthousemagic at gmail.com so first of all I've got a question from Katie and she was asking how do I alternate skeins she she's described about doing the yoke of the of like a top-down jumper in one skein and then starting to do the alternating skeins in the body and she was asking whether I keep some of that first skein from the yoke of the sweater for the sleeves as well now Katie I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to alternation skeins <laughs> So this is my pavement sweater and you can see there that I've knitted the top section in one skein of yarn and then I have started alternating and this particular um, this particular yarn I actually got them out of two separate dye batches so it's my own fault I knew that they were going to be quite different when I started to knit with them but I think it actually illustrates what I do in terms of alternating skeins. So you can see that I've knitted the yoke of the jumper in one skein and then I've started to alternate in the body doing two rows and then this particular garment I think it was the under the arm that I started to um, I ran the seams I think you can just about see where I've on the outside of the garment where I've run um, the alternating yarns down on the inside and it looks like this you can see I'm doing every two rows 
and I just to be honest I just used the what well, I used up the rest of the the first skein in the body alternating it with another skein and then I just started when I'd done that I just alternated the same um, on the sleeves but I just kept on going with, what, with whatever skein I'd got next but I did try and pick because I could see that there was a darker and a lighter skein there was two darker and two lighter skeins um, out of the yarn that I bought because I knew that they weren't out of the same dye batch I, so I don't blame it on the yarn dyer it was a completely different yarn batch so that they there was two that were lighter two that were darker I then sort of chose one dark and one light to alternate for the body I used those up um, and then whatever was left I started alternating the same on the sleeves and then once I'd done I'd used that dark and light skein I'd switched to the next dark and light skein so I, I look carefully at the yarns that I've got and think right do, does there look like there's a subtle difference between those and if there is some that are darker and some that are lighter I try them and sort of alternate them with the opposite ones so that the colours blend a bit more. So I'm afraid I'm a bit lazy and I don't save any of that yarn um, from the top here for the sleeves but you could if you were being really careful and you wanted it to be a really nice blended um, colour all over you could potentially you could actually um, sort of knit a bit of your sleeves as you go and make sure that you get to the same point of that first skein of yarn and distribute it evenly between the sleeves and the body if that makes sense but because I'm lazy and to be honest I think I've been happy with how it's turned out every time I've done it I literally just used that full skein up that I started around the yoke um, in the alternator skeins once I've split for the sleeves use it up as I go and start with another skein um, and alternate those two skeins for the sleeves as well but I do think alternating skeins for the main body is really important really so there we go Katie hope that's helpful the second question I've got is from Stormy Cat and she was she was saying about um, a pattern she is knitting the underarm tells you to cast off 10 stitches and then to cast the 10 stitches back on afterwards and she was asking why not just keep these stitches on a holder and just reuse them and just use them as needed um, and is this something to do with like the structure of the garment I would have thought it was to do with the structure because when you cast something off and then cast something on again it it stabilizes that sort of seam line especially if you've got stitches over a shoulder here if it tells you to cast off or if you if you if that is your cast on edge and then you're working down from there rather than doing a provisional cast on I would start with a standard cast on method because it will stabilize that seam at the top there so I hope that answers your question and the next question I've got is from two ladies and it's from Lucy and Linda and they were asking me what are my most used baby knits I'm just going to do a general overview here quickly describing what I think is most useful but I think I might do a proper little video actually on some of the most useful baby knits after a sort of I think I'm going to give myself six months or so um, of, of him wearing different things and then do a bit of a review of some of the patterns that I've done so generally I prefer using cardigans rather than jumpers <laughs> just because my little Jensen's a bit of a wriggler and getting things over his head and his arms in things <laughs> is a bit of a pain so I would generally go for cardigans I think but I do think uh, obviously what yarn weight that you're going for depends on what time of year your baby is born so Jensen was born in November so I needed quite thick things really so I think that I've actually used a couple of the things that are really thick to be a sort of a coat rather than buying those sort of all-in-one jumpsuits because they grow out of them quicker so like DK or Aran weight cardigans I think are really useful I have got a cardigan that I used quite a lot um, that I knitted for Jensen that I haven't shown and his little twirl at the end well twirl is sitting in the seat and <laughs> showing you what he's wearing um, but I'll probably show that next week um, but it's a it's an it's a DK weight cardigan and I tend to pop that on him a lot and I do like the newborn vertebrae as well because it's got um, 
it just basically comes up to here and if he does sick up on it um even though it's a lightweight cardigan i sort of have it for around the house as well um so if he does have a bit of sick on it it doesn't go on the cardigan it's on his top rather than the cardigan so i do recommend that pattern for sort of in indoor knitwear wearing but other than that i do like the thicker weight yarns um because of the time of year he was born the other thing that I also am really surprised I really liked putting on him was the romper that I showed you on last week's podcast at the end of the podcast and it's got buttons at the shoulders and on the crotch as well so that's really easy to put on but keeps him nice and cosy and that was that was a four ply weight um, garment and that's got a little cute little bobbles on so I'm really surprised how much I like to put in that on him it was easy to put on him because of the the shoulders and the crotch area buttons and it's just and it's something that looks really cute as well i think hats are always a must and i'm thinking that the the hats that he's worn the most are the ones that are probably in garter stitch or the ones that are a stretchier fabric um just because i find them easier to put on his head for a start <laughs> because he's a little wriggler again um but also they'll last a bit longer because of the stretchiness of the fabric so anything that's sort of garter stitch or i do have one that my friend claire knitted that was like a double layer uh of a stockinette and that seems really stretchy as well so that was lovely with little kitten ears on the top i have showed that on one of the previous podcasts um unfortunately i don't know the, what the pattern name is because it was gifted to me but it was really lovely little pattern I must say I don't use socks and booties and mittens very much the knitted ones I find that they go flying <laughs> I do wear them I do get him to wear them occasionally if he goes out but in the house I just I I'm not I'm not a big fan of the socks and booties and mittens I try and buy him little suits with the feet and the hands built in so that you can fold it over his hands to stop him scratching his face and things and then he doesn't kick off socks and things so even cotton non-knitted non ones I, I try to avoid them a little bit because he does kick them off but he has got a few pairs that he's worn i like to have him in when he's going out to keep him nice and cozy but as a general rule i'm not a massive fan of the the socks and booties and mittens one thing i do think is absolutely essential is to have a few blankets now jensen has got two habitation throws and then we've got a few other blankets that people have knitted for him or gifted him that i just think are absolutely essential and i I'm, i've got about five blankets now um that are like crocheted or knitted and they are brilliant and i definitely need those five blankets <laughs> because if there's any sick on them they can be popped in the washing machine um on a gentle wash even if it's knitted with a super wash yarn i find that they're quite easy just to pop in the washing machine on a gentle wool wash and they're absolutely brilliant i think crochet ones are slightly quicker so if you're knitting them as a gift they'd be brilliant but i've got a couple of habitation throws and the patterns by helen stewart and i find those really useful um to take around with us and have around the house just makes life so much easier to have several of them so hopefully that's helpful for anybody who's got any babies on the way uh but like i said i will do a proper little video of some after he's about six months old so i really feel i can um, recommend a particular pattern so i've just got my shop update and then jensen's little appearance with his handmade outfit at the end of the podcast so for the shop update the yarn clubs for march will be available from tomorrow that's the 18th of february at 7 p.m gmt and they'll be available until the 27th of february for pre-order so that's the march yarn clubs and they will be shipped on the 11th of march so if you'd like to have a sort of email reminder for that don't forget to subscribe to my email um what you do is just go to the website crafthousemagic.co.uk and you scroll down to the bottom of the page and there's a little box there you can pop your email address in and you'll get an email update every time i do uh, an update for the shop so I thought it might be nice to show you January's colours that I chose. So if you haven't got January yarn clubs, look away now. I'm, I won't be showing anything else apart from Jensen where there'll be a timestamp on the end of the podcast now if you want to skip along to that. If you don't want to see what the colours are, if you're keeping it as a surprise. So first of all, um, this is for the Power Ballad Sock Club for January. 
I chose Total Eclipse of the Heart, which is a very classic power ballad song. And this is the very pale turquoise blue with pink and purple splashes in there with a purple mini to go with it. So this was inspired by the song Total Eclipse of the Heart and it was from the video. There was some turquoise colours in there with, and I noticed there was some curtains swishing about which were in the purple and the pink colours. So that's why I chose those particular colours. Sometimes I'm inspired by the music video. Sometimes I'm inspired by photos of that, like the album cover or something that springs to mind when I'm listening to the lyrics. Um, but most of the time it's to do with either the video or the album cover. So there we go, that's Total Eclipse of the Heart that was January Yarn Club. This won't be available this year, but I may release these colourways perhaps next year, so at least 12 months you won't be able to get them for. Um, but that's this, that's the January's Sock Club and the Total Eclipse of the Heart inspired yarn. I also do the mixtape minis and I've got five songs um, that I were inspired by for this month, for, for January. So this first one was inspired by Who's That Girl by Madonna and it's different shades of grey there. The second one here was inspired by the song Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice and you've got turquoises and different blue patches in there. The next one is Never Tear Us Apart by In Excess and it's a teal colour um, which goes really well with the blue in Ice Ice Baby. Then I have a grey tonal with some different turquoise and blue speckles on there and that's called There Must Be an Angel inspired by the Arrhythmics song. And then last of all I have Stay by Shakespeare's sister which is a blue green tonal which goes really well with the speckles in There Must Be an Angel. So those are all designed to go together so you might use them in like a cowl pattern or a shawl pattern or a blanket. Um, but that's but that's for January mini and like I said I'm not going to be releasing these colourways um, again until at least next year and they might not all be released either. So later this month I'm hoping to have in the shop some more of last year's mixtape minis, mini sets and sock sets as well from the Young Club. So before I go I've got a little video clip of Jensen wearing a little romper suit that I was talking about earlier in the Ask Me Anything thread. Um, so I'll pop that footage here now. So today Jensen's wearing a gorgeous little romper and this is the Poppy Romper by Pippi Eve and it's lovingly made by my lovely friend Emma and isn't it gorgeous? This is actually the 6 to 12 months version but it's just about fitting in now. There's quite a bit of growth um, so we'll fit in it for a while so that's good. But he is in normally three to six months clothes already so um, he's, a, he's quite a big boy aren't you Jensen? You're fast growing. So what do you think of your new romper, Jensen? <laughs> yeah, I think you like it, don't you? And it's really good because there's buttons both on the shoulders and in between the legs, which makes it really easy to put on, which is so good. I'm very thankful when I've got a wriggly little Jensen when I'm trying to get him dressed. <laughs> he doesn't seem half as wriggly now when he's sitting in his chair. Do you, Jensen? Anyway, say bye bye to everybody. <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you next week in next week's episode. Bye.
We can have a little smile. We're going to smile for everyone. Oh, come on. Come on, little smiler. Come on, little smiler. Come on, little smiler. Doo, 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 doo. Come on. Are you doing some dribbles there? Yep. Jensen. 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 Whee! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a little smile. Are we going to smile? Smile. <laughs> <laughs>